in the garden. Books don't usually disappear. In other words. <laughs> <laughs> I had to reset it for now. Yeah. Oh, I started to get a little nervous, but I didn't. All right. <clears throat> if you have a bulletin, let's look at the announcements that we have in there. Uh, today's fifth Sunday, and we're going to do communion service. And uh, if you didn't get uh, the juice and the in the wafer. Uh, there's some at each entrance. If you haven't got that, you can get up and we'll get up there at each entrance that you can get those for later on, okay? So we're doing that today. Next Sunday, September the 5th, is the first Sunday of our new church year. So when you need a list, uh, the copy of where the, the new officers and new teachers and coordinating all the different groups, you can visit a church office, stop by there, and you can get the list of those who <clears throat> in those positions for this year. And there might be something that you need to do you can volunteer for. Dixie Jackson, uh, Arkansas Missions Offering and, and Week of Prayer is begins September the 12th in two weeks. And 100% of all the offering that goes to Dixie Jackson is used right here in the state of Arkansas for all our missions and missionaries right here. Our goal is $3,000. So just praying to God what God would want you to give there. Our WASH program... <clears throat> is needing some volunteers. 
And if uh, you consider serving, pray about that and see Miss Evelyn, she can put you to work. And uh, we need to, if, if God puts it on your heart to do that, see her because we need to uh, minister to these kids that we, we have coming. Also, there's some witnessing tools available in the foyer. Uh, a little booklet, The Way to God, and uh, they're free. So if you see those when you leave out, you can get, get you one of those, okay? And then September the 22nd is See You at the Poll, and the students will be meetings. And uh, like I said, they're going to have a, probably both elementary and high school. So if you could be there to pray with the students and everyone else there, it would be good because I said earlier this morning, uh, there's no doubt that uh, we need prayer for our little community, but our nation <clears throat> needs prayer. And uh, is there any other announcements? Jim, tell them about tonight at 6 o'clock. We're going to have a sing-a-thon since it's a field Sunday night. So if anybody would like to come sing a special tonight at 6 o'clock, just, we're just going to have singing. Okay. 6 o'clock. Sing-a-thon. Bring a song. Bring your voice. It don't matter what it sounds like. So I'm going to make a joyful noise to the Lord and sing. Every one of you here, choo, 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 choo. We'll go for two hours, all righty? All right. So tonight at 6 o'clock. Any other announcements? Any prayer requests we need to add today? <clears throat> Okay, Miss Evelyn asked for prayer. Uh, Stacy, is her name right? Yes, sister-in-law. Sister-in-law's mother having a funeral today and asking for weather to hold off. Is, and that's another thing we need to mention in prayer. I mentioned too is, of course, the Gulf Coast and this hurricane moving in. We've got a lot of people going down to work. we got a lot of people live there. and I, it's, it's a bad situation. God changed that, but we'll ask God to, to keep these people safe. But remember this family today is having a funeral. May they, they get get it in without having bad bad weather down there. Okay. Up here at North Fork. Yeah. Yeah, there was a boy drowning in the river yesterday. I think Chris had him in Yeah. My cousin, uh, Julie Christopherson, she had just finished up having chemotherapy because she had breast cancer. But then she came down with COVID also. She was in the hospital, but Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, let's go with the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord, we come to you today, dear Lord, and we're so thankful that we, we can come to your house to worship you, Lord. We have that freedom. We thank you for the country we live in. That's, Lord, that's available to us. And Lord, I lift up our country to you today. I... Uh, I pray for safety for these people. This storm coming in down there, dear Lord, watch over all of them, be with them. Lord, may they all use common sense and do things that they should. But, Lord, we, we just praise you for all that you've done for us and, and you've given us. And uh, be with us this morning as we sing praises to you, Lord. And Brother Kevin, as he brings the word to us, Lord, and may we come and have a wonderful worship experience here today. And worshiping you, we thank you for what you're going to do and everything lord we lift up all these needs that's been mentioned we've got the different ones on our in our bulletin but lord these needs that's been mentioned this morning dear lord if each one dear lord you know these people you know what's going on and uh we just pray for that special touch from you we pray for prayers to be answered dear lord today and uh we're thankful that you love us so much that you want that relationship lord Again, we love you today. Be with us in the remainder of this service and everything we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed Assurance.
Good morning, everybody. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. I'm only human. I'm just a woman. Help me believe in all I can be and all that I am. Show me the stairway. I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time one day at a time sweet jesus 
That's all I'm asking of you Just give me the strength To do every day What I have to do Yesterday's gone Sweet Jesus And tomorrow may never be mine Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Do you remember when you walked among men well Jesus you know if you're looking below it's worse now than then cheating and stealing violence and crime so for my sake Teach me to take one day at a time One day at a time Sweet Jesus That's all I'm asking of you Just give me the strength To do every day What I have to do Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus And tomorrow may never be mine Lord, help me today Show me the way One day at a time Lord, help me today Show me the way one day at a time. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. God is good at all the time. Maybe somebody's got a word you'd like to share today, how good God is or something God's laid on your heart. All right, Brother Casey. Woo, praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Woo. I tell you, for those people at home that are on the internet, I know you couldn't hear what Brother Casey said. Brother Casey said he's going to celebrate his 42nd birthday. And 30 years ago, he was sitting in a doctor's office, and the doctor came in and said he had a brain tumor and he only had two weeks to live. And here it is, 30 years later, he said Jesus is still on the throne. He took his hand in and he's had his hand all the way. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. We serve a risen Savior. Amen. Amen. We serve the great physician. Somebody else want to stand up and give the Lord some praise? Yes, Johnny. Thank you. 
You know, our hearts go out to that family. Yes. Thank you, Miss Sue. We love you too. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yep. Miss Linda. It's amazing how God takes bad things and he, he makes good become of them. But that's the God we serve, amen. Anybody else? need to pause and we need to lift up I go back to this drowning that happened yesterday here on the river uh, you know a lot of people think they're invincible but we live here and we understand that river is dangerous and it's cold and you might be a great swimmer but when you hit that 56 degree water things are different and it can pull you under and and I think we just need to have a special prayer for that family I think he was from Texas the guy the young guy that drowned and they're still looking for his body and brother Gary would you voice a prayer for that family for us today Man. I know Brother Jim mentioned this, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it again. If you did not get your juice and bread already for our Passover meal, the Lord's Supper, communion, whatever what you want to call it, uh, go ahead and do that right now. There's somebody in the foyer, there's some up here, and I'll give you another heads up. The bread is in the top. And you, there is a clear film over the bread and a, there's a full film over the juice. So what you want to do is you want to pull the 
clear film to get to the bread, and then the foil gets to the juice. And what I would do if I were you is I would go ahead while you're while we're having a little message here, I would go ahead and start finding that clear top portion and portion and, and pull that off a little bit so you'll be easily, easily uh He's easy to get to at the end of the service when we actually do it because I'd hate for all of us to be partaking of the bread and you can't get to it. Amen. But anyway, if you're like John and you've already eat the bread and drank the juice, you thought it was a treat, go ahead and get you another one. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. Yeah, I tell you what, you can have fun in the Lord's house, amen. amen. And we're glad to see you. We had a big crowd for our early service, one of the biggest crowds we've had. And we're glad to see you at our regular service here, our visitors. We have quite a few visitors here this morning. So good to, so good to have you. And, of course, we've got some folks, this is their second or third time coming. And after the, after the first time, you're no longer a visitor. You're home folks. So you're home folks back there this morning. But anyway... Yes. Okay. Yeah, remember we are searching for a youth uh, children's director. And so the church committee is meeting this afternoon at 5 o'clock. So don't forget about that in the fellowship hall. All right. So if you have your Bibles today, I want you to be turning to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, that's going to be our text. We'll read, uh, start at about verses 7 and go to, the, to verse 23. In many places in Scripture, we see commands given to us from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One of those commands is the Great Commission. It's found in Matthew chapter 28. And that command says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Actually, there are around 49 or so commands found in the New Testament given to us by Jesus Christ. There was a command to repent, a command to follow me, a command to rejoice, a command to let your light shine. He commanded us to love the Lord your God. He commanded us to love our neighbor as ourselves. And many, many other commands we find in Scripture given to us by Jesus himself. But one command is often overlooked. It's the command to remember. To remember. And it's found in, in the other Gospels as well. But today we're going to be looking at Luke's Gospel. And so if you have our text today, Luke 22, would you say, I have it, Pastor? Would you stand in the reverence of the reading of God's word, please, as we begin in verse 7 of Luke chapter 22. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. So they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Now, let me stop right there just a minute. You know, I'm sure the city was filled with a lot of different people. And I'm sure the disciples, when Jesus said, There's a man that I want you to go find, they probably first of all thought, Man, there's going to be a lot of men in the city. How do we know which one specific, which man specific that you want us to contact? And Jesus tells them, look for the man with a picture of water. 
And the reason that stood out was because you never saw a man with a pitcher of water. It was actually the woman's job to get the water. And you would see women carrying pictures all the time in the city, but never a man. But here in this instant, Jesus says, you're going to see someone that stands out like a sore thumb. A man's going to be carrying a picture of water. That's the one that you need to follow him into his house. Now let's read on. Verse 11, then you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room. There make ready. So they went and found it just as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do or do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20, likewise he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And truly the son of man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And then finally, verse 23, then they began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do this thing. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day that we've set aside, Lord, to come and remember. Lord, may our hearts be prepared, our minds, Lord, be filled with nothing but you today, Lord, that we may remember this time. Lord, we pray for these who've been lifted up this morning. Lord, anoint this time, anoint this message, anoint this time together. Lord, let your Holy Spirit have its way and his will in this place. Lord, we love you and we're thankful for salvation, eternal life. And we ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen, you may be seated. The command to remember. The command to remember. Do this in remembrance of me. I believe that we see four ways that are involved in the command to remember. I think we see four ways in our text today that gives us direction how we can obey this command to remember. The first way we can obey this command is by looking back. Looking back, we see in verses 7 through 13 that Jesus asked his disciples to go and prepare the Passover meal. He instituted the, the Lord's Supper or communion during this Passover feast. Now you may ask, Brother Kevin, what, what is Passover? What was Passover? Well, Passover was a celebration that commemorated the exodus of the Israelites from Egyptian bondage or Egyptian slavery. The Lord placed 10 plagues on the Egyptians in an effort to get Pharaoh to let God's people go. And one of the plagues, the very last plague, was that the firstborn son of the Egyptians would die. The firstborn son of the Egyptians would die. Now Moses told the Hebrew families, the Israelites, he told them, hey, there's a way for the death angel to pass over your house, pass over your family. He told them, he said, if you will kill a lamb and you will sprinkle or spread his blood over the doorpost of your house, the doorpost of your house, if you will do that when the death angel comes, to take the firstborn son of the, of the Egyptians, he will pass over your house. Therefore, we have the celebration. They had the celebration they observed every year after that called the Passover. 
they would tell the story of the Passover. And, and that way, each generation, they would pass it along to each generation. The story of how the death angel passed over them because of the blood of the lamb. Let me tell you, the day I got saved, the blood of Jesus Christ was spread upon the doorpost of my heart. And because of the blood of Jesus covering my sins, I have a home in glory and I will not have to suffer the wages of sin, which is death. And you know something? If you've been saved today, if you are a child of God, the same exact thing has happened in your life. The blood of Jesus has been spread over the doorpost of your heart and because of Jesus Christ, you now have life and life eternal, amen. Praise God for the blood of Jesus, amen. Praise God for the blood of Jesus. We need to look back this morning. We need to look back this morning. We need to remember and we need to be thankful for what Jesus has done for us. Thank you, God, for the precious blood of Jesus. One dark night in Egypt A fearful time had come For one little Hebrew boy Who was his father's firstborn son with the angel of death passing low It was hard to fall asleep But one little lamb stood in his mind As he lay there counting sheep He, he thought of why the young lamb had to die Why his blood was on the door through the wind and rain, it is still remained, but he wanted to be sure. So he called out to his earthly father with a trembling voice so scared, crying, Father, will you please look and see if the blood is still there? He said, son, now don't you worry, for the blood is there to stay. The wind may blow and the rain may fall, but it won't just wash away. The blood will stand the raging storm. It's been applied with loving care. Safe, secured, you can rest assured that the blood is still there. Looking over the damage Satan's storm had left behind, the flood of endless questions, doubt had filled my mind. That gripped my troubled soul Brought me back to my knees in prayer Crying, Father, will you please look and see If the blood is still there And he said, Son, now don't you worry For the blood is there to stay The wind may blow and the rain may fall, but it won't just wash away. The blood will stand the raging storm. It's been applied with loving care. Safe, secured, you can rest assured that the blood is still there. Safe, secured, you can rest assured that the blood
has been applied to our lives and is still there. Amen. Amen. Woo! It don't make a Baptist want to shout. Amen. Amen. And it's okay to shout. Amen. 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 We need to look back. To obey this commandment, we need to look back. Secondly, I believe to obey the command, we need to look ahead. We need to look forward. Look ahead. In verse 18, Jesus tells his disciples, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Folks, I want you to know something this morning. Jesus is coming back. Did you hear what I said? Jesus is coming back. Hey, man. He's coming back. The first time he came, he was crucified. But the next time he comes, it'll be for an, a coronation. Hey, man. The first time he came, he stood before Pilate. But this time, my friend, when he comes, Pilate is going to have to stand before him. Hey, man. The first time he came, they crowned him with a crown of thorns. Oh, but the next time, I want you to know, he's going to be wearing the crown that says, King of kings and Lord of lords. He's coming back, amen. He's coming back, and it's going to be very soon. Amen. And then thirdly, we need to look inside. We need to look on the inside. We need to look back, we need to look ahead, and we need to look on the inside. In verse 21 through verse 23, Jesus is pointing out the fact that someone is going to betray him. And they are there with the table, at the table with him. Let's read it. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And then verse 23, it says, Then they began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do this thing. The Lord's Supper should be a time of introspection. I don't know if that's a word or not, but it sounds like a good word. Introspection. I think it's a time when we should inspect on the inside, inspect ourselves, inspect ourselves. 1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 11, Paul talks about this very thing. He says, you should examine yourselves. Examine yourselves before eating the bread and drinking the cup. He goes on to say, if you would examine yourself, you would not be judged by God. So we should examine our own lives. This should be a time that we take inventory of our lives. See if there's any unconfessed sin in our lives. We should also recommit ourselves to the work and cause of Jesus Christ. It should be a time that we recommit ourselves. Looking inside is always a good thing, especially if you make the needed corrections as a child of God. And may we do that today. And then lastly, we can obey this command of Jesus Christ by looking across, looking across. Now, I said look behind, look, look in the past, look ahead, look in the future, look on the inside, examine ourselves, and then lastly, look across. Now, you have to stretch this one a little bit. I wanted it to all work together, and in order for do the, to do this, I said look across, but here's what I meant. I mean looking across at the cross of Jesus looking at the cross of Jesus. Jesus tells us in verse 19 and 20, and he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he says, he took the cup after supper, saying, the cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. At the Passover meal, Jesus' last supper, he took the unleavened, Passover bread and he repurposed that bread. He repurposed it. See, in the Passover meal, the bread symbolized the haste in which the Israelites had to flee Egypt. But now Jesus gives it a new meaning. Jesus gives the bread a new meaning. He says, this is my 
body. It symbolizes the very body of Jesus Christ. Now, the bread was not literally the body of Jesus Christ, but it would symbolize the body that Jesus sacrificed on the cross for the forgiveness of sin. And then he takes one of the four cups of wine. During the, the meal, there were four cups of wine that symbolized four different things, but he takes one of those cups of wine that was used in the Passover observance, and he says, this is my blood. He says, this cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. See, Jesus takes two key elements of the Passover meal, the wine and the unleavened bread, and he completely reinterprets them. But did you notice something? He mentioned the bread, he mentioned the wine, but he did not mention the lamb. The lamb, he left the lamb out. The Passover lamb was the Old Testament's type and Jesus is the New Testament anti-type. A lot of people like symbolism in the Bible. I do. I like, I like symbolism. And here you actually see symbolism, the lamb in the Old Testament and Jesus in the New Testament. Jesus says, look, from now on, whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you are not remembering the Passover lamb that saved you from the physical death back in Egypt, but you are remembering me now, that perfect lamb, that perfect sacrifice that saves you from eternal death. Glory to God for Jesus, amen. Let me close this part of the service by saying the blood and the body of Jesus is still available today. The body and the blood of Jesus is still available today. It's still just as powerful today to forgive sin as it was when he was crucified on the cross. His body and his blood is still just as powerful today as it was then. You may feel that you're at the end of your rope today. You may feel as though there's no future, there's no hope. You're discouraged. You may feel like there's nothing to live for. But I want you to know something, you're wrong. There's the body and the blood of Jesus ready to change your life today just as it's changed our lives, it still has the power to change your life today.
If you would, prepare for the bread, please. We find these words in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jim, would you bless the bread, please? May we remember the body of Jesus. Would you prepare the juice, please? Verse 25 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Greg, would you bless the cup, please? May we remember the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you so much for being with us today at our communion service. Thank you for Brother Jim and Miss Evelyn who sang for us and certainly Miss Ruthie Curtis and her special music. And thank you for watching today. God bless you.